two guys have walked in here and I haven't because looked twice at them. you don't fancy them. But I've got history with Tom. I fancied him at one point. Tyler You said is a to me you guy. don't fancy them. You can't give me one reason and then change your mind now. Okay. Yesterday I was very positive about Chris. Today there's nothing positive about Chris. I think he's very pompous. I didn't like the way he spoke to Arabella, whether she was right or she was wrong. That was uncalled for. It really was. Um, for him to give an excuse that he opened up to her. Well, you opened up on national TV, so it's nothing to write home about, buddy. Anyway, I digress. Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. It's your girl, Valerie. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos and definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Love Island UK All Stars Season 1, Episode 10. So the dates end and you have, you know, the people upstairs come back down to sort of catch up and find out how the dates went and everybody wants to know as well. And so in front of, you know, the 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 people that prepared the meals uh tom is sort of asked or in front of their dates he's asked who was his favorite date and he is just say he's sort of very vague in the sense that he says every date was different in how it went so he can't sort of grade them and it's like uh, we already know who you like the most so please stop lying anyway he has a chat with mitch and tyler and he's sort of asked who was your favorite and he says well with Arabella, there was really nothing there. And we could see that. We could see that right from the jump. Uh, but with Molly and with Georgia S, yes, he felt something because Molly is quite beautiful. And Georgia S, they've got the history. And it's like, why do we keep including Molly's name in things that we know for a fact she's not interested in? Is there a contract for her name to be brought up by every guy as their favorite? I didn't see anything. I know they were very happy and she was more giggly, but still they didn't seem to be anything there. So it doesn't make sense to me. Um, the girls, you have Liberty, Hannah and Kaz have a conversation with Sophie to sort of catch up on her dates. And she seems to have enjoyed her dates with Josh more. And I'm like, nah, not really. I don't think Josh is it because Josh is there for a great time and he's going to waste her time if she's not careful. So I would rather she maybe try things out with Toby because Toby at the moment is the single guy. I think I love Toby. I love his personality. I think he's just the cutest thing. So I think she would have been better off with Toby. Um, and then turns out, well, Chris apparently had a crush on Sophie for a long time and it seems it's something that is passing around the villa and it's like why do you need to tell people that and he has a conversation with Arabella and tells her that you know oh I enjoyed my date I want to continue to get to know Sophie uh, she says she wants to continue to get to know me and it's like everybody likes Chris until he talks and then when he starts talking, it just goes from bad to worse. And the good looks sadly cannot save him because of the things that come out of his mouth. And for him to tell Arabella that, oh, I've always had a crush on Sophie doesn't make sense to me. I think Arabella is going to regret maybe not pursuing something with Messy Mitch because at the end of the day, now she's questioning whether this guy really liked her or he only liked her enough to use her. And this is what it seems like. I think Chris liked her because she was the shiniest thing. And then now he's moved on to the next shiny thing and she's left all alone. Poor thing. Um, she has a conversation with Josh sort of telling him that I don't feel like he should have told me about having a crush on Sophie. And yeah, I guess she's right. But what is she going to do? She it's a, it's better she knows than not know. And she now needs to make moves according to the information just that she's obtained instead of just sitting there and waiting for Chris to decide who he wants to pick at the end of the day. Georgia S sits down and has a conversation with Callum. I wish she had been honest like Chris. I would rather she had told, um, you know, Callum the truth because she does talk about the fact that Tom apparently drove up north to see her without a phone. And it's like this day and age, who doesn't have a phone? She would rather have said his battery was flat than say he didn't have a phone. I think she's just trying to make it romantic. I feel like she likes Tom more than she actually likes Callum. And I wish she had told Callum the whole truth because Callum is sort of saying now, how do I compete with a guy who drove with just an, uh, an address on a piece of paper without a phone? And it's like, well, 
I don't get why she said that. I think she should have told him the truth. Uh, you know, we, we, we dated or we want, we tried, you know, we, we got to know each other. And sadly, at the time we got to know each other, I was exploring another connection with Toby and I felt that was stronger. So I broke it, things off with Tom, with Tom. That would have made sense then for her to talk about the date. I don't even know the relevance of that. So you have Liberty at Paul Mitch for a chat. What do I think? I think Liberty is trying to make that relationship more than it actually is. Mitch has been showing who he is right from the start, from the moment Demi told her that, you know, Mitch said she was his number one. So the idea that she would think that Mitch would want to commit to her is laughable, really, in the sense that she has this conversation and moans that somebody told her that Mitch is there for the clout. Every single person in the villa is there for the clout. They are dating apps. They are social media apps. You know, people are seeing each other on social media. So the idea that all of them are in the villa just to look for love is laughable. And every season you have people say, oh, so and so is there for clout. Every single person in the villa is, for, is there for clout. If they're not there for clout, why don't they turn off their social media as soon as they leave the villa? That's their source of income. They are all there for clout. And yet they have to tag someone every single season that this person is there for clout. Anton is there for clout. Toby is there for clout. Every single person in the villa is there for clout. If they were not there for clout, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be there because they don't need to go on the show in order to find love. That's just my opinion. And because they're already dating each other, there's a lot of incest. There's a lot of, you know, situationships that are developing after the show. Why did they come there a second time, a third time, a fourth time? Because they're all there for the clout. So the idea and the audacity of, you know, Liberty to, to be upset that, oh, Mitch is here for the clout and it's not. Mitch has shown you that is open to getting to know other people, that is open to exploring connections with other people. And so the idea that you think by coming to him and telling him what Anton said, he's going to close off, is laughable. It really is. It's laughable. And for Mitch to go and have a conversation with Anton, I get where Anton is coming from, but I also get where Mitch is coming from in the sense that if Liberty really wanted to know where Mitch stands in regards to their connection, she should have gone to Mitch and he would have told her the truth. He has not lied to her at any point throughout this thing, apart from telling her that she was his number one. He's always been open that he, you know, he's open to exploring connections with other people. If she's watched this season, she knows who Mitch is. So I don't get why she's trying to make him something that he's not. And yeah... I get Anton saying, you know, it's, I can't sort of lie on your behalf to somebody else. If somebody asks me for my honest opinion, I'm going to give it to them. But then at the same time, there's no point in giving your honest opinion to someone who doesn't want your honest opinion. Liberty doesn't want your honest opinion. Liberty is looking for someone to blame when things fall apart with Mitch because she knows that Mitch is really not feeling her that way. And instead of accepting that and moving on, she's decided to continue to play the victim. And I don't get it. Anyway, all the Islanders get ready for bed. So you have Georgia S sitting on Callum and Molly's bed. And then she says, oh, I need to move in case Molly comes. And it's like, Molly already knows you're exploring your connection with Callum. Molly already knows that you're kissing Callum. So the idea that she would feel some type of way about you sitting on the bed, please don't make something out of nothing. And Arabella is in in her feelings. She's already complained while they were brushing their teeth that, you know, uh, Chris said he had a crush on Sophie and is open to getting to know her. And it's like, unless you're married off, then be open to the idea that he is going to explore connections. And I don't know why you're really that keen on Chris or whether you thought nobody else would like him and this is why you chose him. But hey, it is what it is. So in the morning, the Islanders have another debrief. Oh God, I hate debriefs. Anyway, so the main topic was, you know, Tom and Sophie and their dates and what else? the liberty situation the liberty situation i'm not going to discuss it just because her saying she wants to, to go back to friendship and then start from there is like that's where you've always been when did you become romantic the fact that mitch was kissing you in bed doesn't make it romantic you could kiss someone that's why there's a hit it and quit it anyway um so i think tom is being very vague i think tom really likes 
uh, Georgia S, but he's worried about the Callum situation. And so for him to say, oh, I was pleasantly surprised by Molly. I didn't expect it to be that good. I, I didn't think she had a personality. You more or less said you didn't think she had a personality, but, you know, seeing her being all jokey and all smiley opened up a different side of her that he didn't know was there. And for Georgia S, he says, oh, I don't know. I just don't want to be with her just because I know her. And it's like, we all know you, you really want to be with her. That's your choice but you're trying to be fake maybe you've been told to be fake that's what i get uh sophie she enjoyed her dates but i think she'd be better off with toby i'm going to say this again chris you can only take him in small doses but hey it is what it is uh arabella is already upset i don't know whether she wants to try anything with that connection given how arabella is feeling at the moment I really am trying to find something nice to say about Chris, but I, I'm struggling today. Anyway, um, he's a jackass, in my opinion, in the sense that I think he's, he's become to be get it uh, because he was able to sort of uh, couple up with Arabella. I think this is why he now thinks he's the Ize and is trying to sort of, you know, show him himself because um, Sophie comes for a chat and then they go for a chat and he asks her, do you want to hold my hand? And everyone in the villa could see that was not necessary. That was not necessary at all. There was no need for him to be holding hands with her or doing anything that might seem inappropriate. Um, we all know he said he's, he's had a crush on Sophie. I understand that, but there's a way to move about without disrespecting your person that you're currently coupled up with um he sort of said oh i want to be respectful i told her i don't want to kiss her he made it seem like she was all over him and he had to sort of pull himself away so that he was still open to getting to know sophie and it's like sophie if he could bounce from arabella to you that fast what makes you think he won't do the same thing um that's just my opinion and for arabella to say i think i said it before arabella was strategic in how she chose um to couple up with Chris. She's already said it, words out of her mouth that she felt like he was the least likely to turn and he's proved her wrong because at the first chance he's, he's turned. Um, her saying that she's been enjoying her chats with Josh, I don't get it. I think even Callum was taken aback because she was saying, oh, you know, our looks are always very sexual. There's this sexual tension between the two of us. I was like, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. What are the producers hiding? We might need to see it again. And uh, she has a conversation with Josh. Josh is just looking for someone to keep him in the villa. That's my opinion. So if Arabella is going to be it, then he's going to continue with Arabella. If it's anyone else, he's going to continue that person. But that's the impression that I get that he's going to pursue something with anyone who's interested because he's, he wants to stay in the villa for as long as possible. That's my opinion of him. I don't get where Tyler and Hannah came from. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't get that connection. I know Hannah is saying she's a slow burner and I'm wondering, is she a slow burner because she really is a slow burner or is she a slow burner just because she wants to keep him, you know, uh, dangling uh, while she waits to see if somebody else comes in that she might have a better connection with. I don't get it. I always struggle with people that come on think shows like this and then say I'm a slow burner. If you're a slow burner, go home and slow burn. You don't need to come on Love Island to, to slow burn because Love Island is very fast paced. So either you like someone or you don't and keep it moving. Um, And then Callum, people are, are so in denial at times. They are so in denial because Callum is having a conversation with uh Kaz and he's sort of being asked that how do you feel about, you know, Georgia S and um Tom, what if they couple up, what will you do? And he's sort of prepared to let his connect, his coupling with Molly go so that he can uh, pursue uh, Georgia S. And it's like, if if you saw their date and you saw their chemistry, why would you want to put yourself in that love triangle? Why? Why not leave it and either explore a connection with somebody else or go back to Molly and see if there's something there? Just because Georgia S, I think, likes tom more than she likes callum i think she liked callum because he was the one in the villa but now that tom is there i think she now wants to pursue things with tom and sort of move away from callum and it's a pity that callum is still in denial um i know she's saying oh i let a three-year relationship die and now i fancy somebody else and it's like well if you were not interested in him why didn't you tell him why did you continue to pursue a connection with him and le let him sort of break things off for a three-year relationship 
why would you pursue things with Callum knowing that you're not really feeling him that way and that at the first opportunity you're going to leave him for somebody else? That didn't make sense to me and I don't empathize with her at all. Um, karma's coming. So while the islanders are getting ready, there's these conversations that take place. Obviously, the girls are talking about the fact that, you know, uh, Georgia S is in a situation with Callum and she's also exploring another connection with um, you know, Tom and Molly jokes that please, you've already taken one. Don't take the other one as well. And it's like, that's the truth though. That's the truth. It's going to leave such a bad taste if she decides to couple up with Tom, but I have a feeling she's going to move on to Tom. I have a feeling that Callum was a convenient, uh, opportunity for her. And so she's moving on to Tom. And then you have the guys talking to Chris in the bedroom as they're getting ready, sort of saying that Arabella felt some type of way about how he's been moving in the villa since Sophie came in. And for him to get upset and say, oh, I don't like people being jealous. I don't like people. And it's like, if she had behaved the same way with Tom, the way you're behaving with Sophie, how would you feel about that? Put yourself in somebody else's shoes and see whether you'd be happy f about that. And when he was told that she felt you're being disingenuous, he got upset. And it's like, why are you upset? Did she hit a nerve then? Are you really being dishonest or what? Why would you be that upset if she wasn't being honest? Uh, you're upset because the allegations are true and now you're trying to hide behind your anger at the end of the day you liked her because she was the shiny object in the villa and you were the one who was able to burden her or, or to woo her over and now this is another shiny object you're going to do the same until somebody else comes in so please sit down somewhere we're not here for that I hate it when the islanders are not honest with one another because Arabella goes to the girls and she's crying you know she felt a spark with Chris that's why she chose Chris and she didn't expect him to be the person whose head was turned and now he's treating her this badly and for me I feel like she looked at all the guys looked at whose head was likely to turn and who was likely to stay in the villa and she thought she would be safest with Chris she felt Chris would appreciate who she is and the resume she brings and sadly he has treated her like crap and none of the girls was honest with her which I hate I feel the girls should have told her the truth. I feel they should have told her. There's no need for you to cry. You've been coupled up with this guy for a couple of days. It's better. You I know somebody said it's better you know now, but at the same time, she's better than this. There's no need for her to cry unless she's crying for the sympathy. She needs to put on a big girl panties and go and explore a connection with somebody else. Anton is there. He's got no one. She can try Anton. I don't know why the girls don't like Anton. Or she can go to Mitch. Mitch would pick her up with both hands and run because he really liked her um and then anton the guys are sort of talking to him and telling him that arabella is crying he's saying oh i don't like the fact that i opened up to her and then she threw it in my face and it's like well you opened up not only to her but to the rest of us so please don't make it seem like it's something special you did it for tv and we don't know whether you were honest or not so please take a seat somewhere so the islanders receive a text message to gather around the fire pit and people are nervous because none of them are in a romantic sort of connection at the moment you have situationships but that's all it is uh you have people liking the other more than their partner likes them that's how it is but anyway um they then receive a text message to say they'll be recoupling the boys will pick and um to sophie receives a text message to say that she and tom will get to recouple with one of the people that they chose for their dates but they don't get to pick who the public gets to vote and for me i knew it was going to be drama i knew the producers were going to choose who they wanted to couple up with whom i don't know i haven't been on the website so i don't know whether the results were genuine or not because they couple up tom with sophie and it's like no anyone who saw the dates knows for a fact that uh tom was feeling um georgia s more than he was feeling sophie and sophie you could tell was very nervous i think because she was worried that if georgia s couples up with Tom who is she going to couple up with because she and Callum have deaded their relationship they've moved on so I that was too toxic I didn't like that I it was too staged in my opinion Sophie gets to couple up with Josh 
I get it because she said her date with Joshua was more comfortable than anything else. I don't know whether the producers are interviewing these people to see who they would be comfortable with. I'm happy for Sophie that she was coupled up with Josh. Actually, I prefer Josh or Toby because I didn't want her to be in that mix with Chris and Arabella. You could tell Arabella was very happy when Chris wasn't the one coupling up with, um, you know, with Sophie because I don't know whether it's because she's happy that he didn't get his way or whether she thinks that they're going to get back together. I don't get it. I, it's very calculated the way the couplings up turn, turned out because now this means that it, unless Toby goes first, but Toby can choose to pick up, you know, uh, Kaz and be in a friendship couple because I don't know whether there's still anything there left with Georgia S. Georgia S seems to have moved on. She seemed disappointed that she wasn't coupled up with Tom. I think she's going to continue to try and explore that unless... Callum decides to close things off with her, which I don't see happening. Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait for the next recoupling tomorrow. But I'm so anxious about my girl. I really don't want her dumped. I don't want Cass to go home. So I don't know who's going to pick her. I don't think Tyler has that strong a connection with uh, Hannah that he would want to pick her. I, I hope Tyler or Toby pick Cass because I don't want Cass to go home. I think she's entertainment gold. I think with Tyler, when they're on it, they're on it. So I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 9. Bye guys.